Queen Hay for you. Uh, as we've already called the meeting to order, and uh, we've uh, had our prayer and placed the flag, I want to uh, uh, produce to you one uh, bill and claim. Uh, it's only the, it's only one, and I need a motion to approve that bill. So, so got a, a motion by Sam, yeah. second by Larry. Count. Count. I count. Uh, any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign? That motion carries. The bills and claims are are uh, approved. Now then, what we're here for in the special call meeting, we're going to ask Ann to explain why these two resolutions are necessary. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go to my chalkboard if y'all don't mind. Go for it. Start chalking more than yeah. I'm so sure school there. Uh, all them uh, crippled hands from stripping that tobacco. I'm <laughs> I wonder if she's able to write. Uh, I think Chase, as y'all know, explained to you last time, the state passed rules on a TVA bill <clears throat> that will not allow the money to come to the court. It has to go to an industrial authority or type. So the thing that I'm going to, the judge asked me to explain is concerning this fiscal year only, nothing else, nothing in the future, this fiscal year only and what's happened. We kind of had a quirk. At the beginning of the fiscal year when we did our budget, we anticipated the county receiving that $50,000 and we put it in our budget that we were going to receive the $50,000. That's the highlighted part here. But per the state's rules, we cannot get this anymore. It has to go to the authority. So this year, this year only, we've got a quirk to have to work out. We're short $50,000 in our general fund budget. Everybody with mm -hmm. me? Okay. So uh, the question now becomes, is how can we recoup some of that money so our general fund budget will not be short. And Chase, um, in doing the project scope and budget that you are getting ready to send up to the state, he's recommending that of the $50,000, it's actually $51,000, 39 of that will go for the water payment that we make to the water the million extra gallons of the bluegrass crossing if that qualifies as industrial uh, development. And 12,000 is for incubator training or something of that sort. Yeah. So in the landfill fund, we make two payments a year of $70,000. So one of these payments of 70, actually it's 69,000. The industrial authority is going to pay 39,000 straight, yeah, straight to the water district. So now then, my ink's running out, I only have to write a check of $30,000 to the water district. So essentially, we freed up $39,000 in the landfill fund. I can then, with approval from court, write a check from the landfill fund for $39,000 and put it into the general fund, which will recoup most of our 50. And we won't be short in the budget. But in order to do that, we have to pass these two resolutions, one to get the authority going and one to get yeah. the Well, as I said, the, the state, and I was at the conference that Chase was at, that's the rules. We're not getting it any other way. And the reason we're doing the authority is because OCDA can't get the OCDA money. OCDA can't get Because OCDA is the, the arm of the, it runs right. through our budget. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, my so only concern is Who's on the authority? Eight members of OCDA. I, uh... I looked up some of the questions that you all asked of me uh, at the last meeting. Um, I was wrong about the composition of the IDA. I thought it was between three and eight. It's actually between six and eight. Um, 
and you asked uh, how the IBA was determined, and I told you that we had just picked uh, eight members of the OCDA board. That was done uh, in consultation with the judge executive, and I remembered uh, after the meeting and looking at the KRS, if you look at the KRS pertaining to industrial development authorities, it says that if the authority is established by a county, the members shall be appointed by the county judge executive, which is what prompted me to have that discussion with David, and we discussed, you know, just make it eight members of the Economic Development Alliance. The current board of the Economic Development Alliance is Kenny Autry, uh, David Figg, David Moore, Earl Morris, Jerry Mays, Darren Luttrell, Cece Robinson, Mark Knight, Bob Lilly, Kim Logson, Sidney Cook, Sam Small, Paul Sandiford, George Chen, and Scott Lewis. Of those, with no rhyme or reason really, just picked eight. Uh, Kenny Autry, David Figg, Darren Luttrell, Scott Lewis, Sam Small, Mark Knight, Cece Robinson, and Paul Sandiford to serve on that industrial development authority. Is the statute not allowed for additional, not over the eight, but to substitute, not to say anything about these individuals here not being qualified to serve? But I was just, my only concern was is having enough representation from the court. Uh, possibly another magistrate along with uh, is, is, that Sam on, is Sam on the final list? Yes. yes. Sam is, is part of yeah. the IDA. Is that uh, already been turned in? No. No. So that could be changed? If I reestablished the IDA because it was dormant. It had been inactive uh, and <coughs> administratively dissolved with the Secretary of State. I filed the paperwork to get it reinstated so that we could accept these monies, uh, but I haven't submitted the board to the Secretary of State. So one of those could be changed without any problem if the judge so fit to do? Theoretically, yes. Um, i trying to think what... Uh, the biggest question, was, I think, was does, it, does the resolution have to be passed by November 9th? And that is yes. That's, yes. Why, we're having that's why we had to have a special call. And I did receive a call last Thursday from Amy Barnes uh, asking she wanted to make sure that we would have this done by that day. She was calling every county to make sure she didn't want anybody to lose out on the money. Another question was, uh, do I have to come before you every year with a resolution authorizing the application? And that is yes. Um, you'll pass the one resolution just stating who is going to be um, the authorized correspondent, you know, whoever you're designating, whichever idea you're designating to receive the monies. And then the other resolution is to submit the application, and that does have to be done every fiscal year. Yeah. Now, once this uh, board is, uh, is established, is there any change in this force personnel is concerned uh, the following year? The uh, statute says that if an authority is composed of eight members, an initial appointment shall be made so that two members are appointed for two years, three members for three years, three members for four years, and upon expiration of these staggered terms, successors shall be appointed for a term of four years. And uh, anyone can be replaced by the authority upon showing that there's been misconduct or a conviction of that member. On, when, does the board, when does that board have to be turned into the uh, state? There's no, uh, <clears throat> I mean, you can, you can change, the, the IDA has been established. Well, the only there's, thing. No, there's no deadline, I believe, of when you have to update your board upon reestablishment. The only thing I was uh, thinking is, I understand the rules here and everything. Mr. Count brought up a good thing about having more magistrate on, magistrates on there. I'd like to see maybe two more put on there. That's just my opinion. But with the upcoming election, there's really no point in rushing it through because you never know who's going to be. And the whole idea is, you know, have the magistrates of the courts that's going to be serving on the next court. Because you so know, I think maybe the magistrates do vote on uh, each year when this is presented. This is presented to the court every year on where the money, what the projects are going to be every year. And we know where the money's going this year. So. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I just think I don't see any reason why we couldn't do the two more on, the, on that board, but but I think we ought to wait until the election's finalized so we know who to... Well, unless there's an emergency on done it, we'll do that. We'll put it off until after next Just meeting. on the board. But uh, do I have a motion on this first resolution, 2019-5? Once you create the agency, 
then the people that's on that particular agency can be filled at any given time. Then. Is that what you're saying? Well, yes. It's, it has to be consistent with the statute, which is, I think the best way to handle this is at some point whenever we all determine who the initial board is going to be, that's when the clock starts running. We're going to also have to determine is Kenny the two year or is Kenny the four year? Because you've got three that are four year, three that are three year. Does it does that have to be? I know the judge is the one that appoints them. Does that still have to go through open court to be finalized? I think I think initially yes, um, but it would be not any decision that this court would have as a whole any decision on. It would just be what who the judge declared to be on that board. Everybody says the purpose is a time frame as far as when their term ends. Uh, of course, the reasoning for this board is it's people that's already been vetted, that I know, I trust, and has proven themselves on the uh, OC board. That's why those uh, those uh, <coughs> names were selected. Not that we don't, uh, uh, and also everybody's on the OC board. Uh, I've proved uh, approved of highly, and have recently appointed them. So, uh, so the ones that we didn't use, I'm not saying anything against them either. But I'm saying all of those that we use were great. Well, I'm not, being, I'm not being judgmental either, uh, Judge, uh, but I still feel like that uh, before I can vote for this, we're going to have to have at least one name change put on the uh, on the board uh, to exclude one of the good individuals you're talking about, but another member of the court to be determined later or whenever, like Joe says, after the election or whatever. So. Okay, just turn in the seven. And then we'll get another court member as the eighth court member. But we have to pass the 51,000 because if we lose that, we're, we're yeah. going to lose that money and it's going to go to yeah. other counties. So yeah, we're we'll going to lose this money if we don't pass these resolutions. The law states that if this court is, is not passed through resolutions by the November 9th date, that amount of money gets spread amongst the other two counties. And, and I don't have any problem with uh, the judge's offer. Uh, Joe, you wanted two, or are you good with one? Or? Of course, you, of course no, there Sam, will be two on there. There'll be uh, Sam's already Sam's on it. Sam's already on it. To, uh, another member of the court to be uh, determined later. So. That will work. So you just put turn into seven now, then it'll fill the eighth one after the election. But we fill the eighth one. Let's call this just the temporary until we have a formal appointment. It's, if you have to turn in any names. Yeah, I don't think he has to turn any names in by. Until after, you're just designating the, what yeah. entity is taking yeah. it. Yeah, right. But I'm saying I was one of the appointment that ones I want to drop. Okay. And I'll talk with, with, with you. You you figure that out for me and get to me, Chase, because I was okay with all of those. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the resolution with, with the IDA right now, which is the 2019-5. Uh, Let's I'll record that. IDA is six. I'll do you second. Do this IDA, yeah. or do you want to do the other one? The other one's first on the list. Okay, let's do the first one then. Okay. Right. Yeah. And can you explain this on page three of three? It's got uh, occupational tax active 100,000, RISC potential 100,000. What is that? The RISE funding. Um, so basically, they're asking there what other sources uh, list project funds that will be used for project completion. So basically, what other funds? are used in our economic development efforts. Um, occupational tax is what OCDA is operated off of. The RISE funding, that is an acronym that stands for Regional uh, Innovations Spurring Entrepreneurship. That is the state restructuring their Kentucky Innovation Network. And we had to submit, uh, regions had to submit applications to receive that RISE funding. And we uh, partnered with GoEDC, Greater Owensboro Economic Development, for $100,000 of that RISE money uh, to help do more trainings and, and things like that. Yeah. So that's what that is. Just, they just want to see you know, what other funds are being used for, for these efforts. I mean, I could have included USDA grant money in there, but that's not ever a guarantee. So I didn't feel, I didn't feel like it warranted me in there. Okay. Johnston? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Now do I have a motion on 2019-6? So, okay. The numbers aren't on these right now. 
Uh, dash 6 is the first one, Dash 5 is the second. No. Dash 6 is the first one. No, actually, on my, my list, it's 06 is the second one on mine. No, 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 he's talking about the packet. Oh, I'm sorry, in the packet. Yeah, okay. I would so move here. Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second, for second by Sam Small. Discussion. This is the same thing, it's just enacting it, right? It's just enacting that authority. Okay. The uh, the resolution that you that you see the, the dollar amount fifty one thousand in the top paragraph yeah that is a resolution approving the application itself to DLG okay the other uh, resolution where you see was the, going to the Ohio County Industrial Development Authority written out at the middle of your page there is the fiscal court designating which agency will receive the uh, regional development assistance funds. <laughs> Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Being a special call meeting, uh, the, uh, that's all the business is conducted. This meeting is adjourned. Miranda, I need